Tracy Morgan, everybody. Yo, I want to let you know right now, before we get started, if I get emotional, please excuse me. Just please excuse me. I don't mind. Yeah. Well, I let it all out. <laughs> I, don't fuck, I, don't, yeah. I don't fake jacks for nobody. Yeah. I'll be faking no jacks. You know me. Yes, I do. I've done this before. Yeah. And if it get open like that, then it get open like that. Yeah. We all human. That's what this show is about. Well, let me tell you something, Tracy, and I was just telling you in the hall. I'm really, really proud of you for this show because it's different right now than anything that's on TV. It's it's uh, different than anything. Let's transcend TV. Yeah, let's, let's go in the world. Okay, let's in go book. in the world with second chances. <laughs> yeah, because the show is about second chances. If you when you as you see the episodes, everybody's changed. Everybody's grown. Okay, this guy did 15 years in prison. He got a second chance. Just, Trey Barker got a Tracy Morgan got a second chance at life. So I can't Trey Barker. Amen. Yeah, yeah. The thing that I like most about this show, it's funny. The funny's organic. It's going to come when you got people like me and Tiffany and Cedric. It's going to be there. But the thing I love most about it, and I give credit to Jordan Peele and John Cartanavi, is the storyline is what holds you. Because we all know these people in, in, in this show. We all know these characters. Yeah, it's true. We all know them. Right. In the 80s, crack and AIDS wiped out a whole generation. Yeah. And you were there for that. And you're also here for the redemption of that as there well. You go. Yeah. Um, I'm glad TBS gave me a home for this show. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do the show that I'd never seen. And then at, when I was home from the hospital in rehab, I was in a wheelchair. Yeah, of course. I would watch Kim Peel mm -hmm. every day just to heal, laughing. And then funny. And I told, when I came out to do the Emmys, when y'all first saw me, right? the Emmys, that day I had, I told my agent I wanted to meet Jordan. I want to be a part of that magic. We had the same comedic sensibilities. I wanted to meet him. So that day before y'all saw me, I had lunch with him. And I told him the story, the story for the show I had for eight years. I had for eight years in my mind. And when I came back and I out of the coma and I got a second chance, and I was able to get all my scuba together, I said, now's the time for this. Because if I wouldn't have got hit by that truck, I'm be, I wouldn't be able to make the positive impact on the world that I'm making right now. So God is a genius. Yeah, He's a genius. He said, I'm going to put you in this. I'm going to put you in this situation just so you get everybody's attention. Because the world we living in now, we need it. We need a lot of love, man. And it got to start in this room. Because then we take that out into the world. I wept for four weeks. Four weeks ago, I wept all day. I mm. wept for a whole week. When what happened in Florida and them kids happened, I just cried. I just cried because they just went to school. They were kids that went to school. And it could have been our kids. We don't look at it until it happens to us. I never saw that truck coming. Never thought about it. Jimmy gone. Jimmy's gone. We don't think about it. So this show hopefully will shed some light on that. We need to spread love in this world, man. And I don't care. Because everybody think being negative and, and dark is cool. Cool is in. And the corporations and all that. Nah, man. That got to start one by one. We got to save each other, man. It's going to start with us, man. I pray to God. I said, God, we need help down here. I'm not even talking about the show right now. I'm talking about human beings. So you know me as a person. Mm. I could be talking about the show. I could be promoting my show. The show going to do what it do. But we need each other, man. Where we going? It's just like, where's the Nor'eastern? Mm. There's a Nor'eastern. There's a Nor'eastern. Where's the Nor'eastern? <laughs> <laughs> My mother-in-law calling. There's going to be a Nor'eastern. No. Mommy is going to disappear in a yeah. couple of days. Yeah. It's been snowing since the beginning of time. <laughs> but the media has to make you go out and buy some salt and some water and some shovels. Yeah. Let's get this economy going. Yeah. That's true. No, leave it alone. It'll melt. <laughs> what happened this morning is going to be gone by 4 o'clock. <laughs> like, literally. Yeah. But we trip and we get anxious and we get excited just watching TV. Yeah. So I'm glad for this TV show because nothing like it on TV. It's grounded. This is our lives. It's real. Just like the Godfather. You didn't just like the mafia. 
because they were killers and stuff. No, yeah. you see the memo uh, yeah. was a Tessio. Yeah, when he was digging in the pot with the with the <laughs> tomato. You were in their house. <laughs> you saw them as a family. <laughs> yeah. You seen Vito as a family. You saw him as a listen. And this show is based on that. Yeah. yeah you seen it. All kinds you of seen Godfather it. references. Godfather references. Yeah. And that's who is better, Michael or Vito? Michael was. Vito was a family man. But Fredo was out there messing around with Mo Green. <laughs> that's true. And that hit happened. Yeah. They try to hit him in Vegas. Yeah. He said, My family. <laughs> remember when Michael yeah, said that? Mike My family. Yeah. And when he said, Michael, remember when the sister said, Michael, <laughs> your father wants to take you to Vegas. <laughs> to Reno. I said, They're about to kill this dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He started doing that Hail Mary I saw. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, yeah. Sonny would have been the man yeah. if they had easy pass. Yeah. <laughs> you know the belt. Yeah. <laughs> He'd have been the man if they had easy pass. <laughs> Coming off that belt parkway. <laughs> That's the belt. I, you I, know the belt. I heard you even have an office set up like the the Godfather. Yeah, is is based on my office in my house. Yeah, it's based on the Godfather, just like it. As yeah. a matter of fact, I'm giving have a, next week. We got my sister. We got a mortician coming in. Yeah. A mortician coming in just to go. Can I be your friend, <laughs> Godfather? <laughs> I want to do that. A mortician yeah. coming in. That's that's like Richie Rich shit there when you can actually recreate the scene. Recreate everything. <laughs> Well, this uh, this show, and you 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 brought up about and Star all the Comedy. other people involved. Yeah. yeah, from I mean, on my set is the coolest because yeah. this is what I wanted. Okay, I wanted love on my set. So when you come on the set, from craft services to the showrunner, yeah, you're a part of this. Right. We can't win if we don't do this like a family. So there's a lot of good mornings. There's a lot of I love yous. One day our director came late. And he came to my trailer to, to apologize to me. And I said, no, when I get to the set, I will deal with you. <laughs> no, it's a real yeah. talk. Yeah. And when I got to the set, I made everybody stop working. The director got something to say to you. And I made him apologize to my set and production. Because everybody in here got up early in the morning, left their families, left their houses, come here. Who you think you are? Who you think you are? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan. No. Emmy nominated Tracy Morgan. <laughs> I would know who you think you are when everybody else is here on time. As a matter of fact, from now on, I want you here before everybody. Getting everything ready. You the director. It's real, man. Yeah. That's how it was when I was up in Star Wars. Same thing, huh? Same thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. I so was watching Star Wars. You mean, I'm pissed off with Star Wars. Why? What's the problem? Well, you mean to tell me in a galaxy far, far, far away is only one nigga? <laughs> I mean, this galaxy is yeah. far away. Yeah. And he looked like Radio <laughs> Raheem from Do the Right Thing. Looked just like Radio Raheem. <laughs> Not falling for it, huh? I would get Princess Leia pregnant. Yeah, you would. I'm old school. I don't pull out. No. I'm like prison. When I come yeah. in, I come in. <laughs> I'm believing we ain't no yeah. rubber on the first date. <laughs> if you ain't willing to die for it, you really didn't want it. Yeah. You ain't want it. You ain't want it. <laughs> that got a body. Yeah. And you know you funny when the ladies in the front row, the pretty ladies in yeah. the front row, they fart when you did laugh. <laughs> burn. Ha <laughs> ha. Burn. I keep the pretty ladies farting. <laughs> I keep them pretty ladies far. And this this is what everything that you dedicate everything to now is just go out whether you're on stage just going out just having fun and, and being positive. Yeah. Everything about you right now is positive. I don't have no reason to be negative. Yeah. He spared my life. Yeah. Why would I? When he spared my life. Why would I? Why wouldn't I love everybody? Why wouldn't I love life? Why wouldn't I embrace it more? When I look at YouTube and I see what that truck looked like, and I'm here walking on my faculties and sane. Most people, you lose a friend and you in an accident like that, most people are insane. I'm sane? Why wouldn't I love you and you and you? Why? Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I embrace life? Yeah. 
<laughs> but it became a, a why, why me, why am I no. here thing after like why that happened? Yeah, when that did happened. that happen? Yeah. Are you asking me? Are you telling me? Yeah. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. I never you. did that. Yeah. I never looked at it like that. Yeah. Okay. I remember one time my grandmoms came to see me. I just came out the coma. I just got my eyesight back because I was blind for a week. People don't know that. I was blind for a week because I messed up the neurons in your brain. So I'm, my sight is back. And my grandmother came. And it was in the morning. I was feeling sorry for myself. And I was crying. And she was about to open the curtains. And I said, Grandma, why well, God let this happen to me? And she turned around with me with this Morgan scowl on her face like she was going to really punch me in my face. <laughs> and she said, don't you ever question God. Everything for a reason. And she turned around. I said, I'm sorry, Grandma. She, she opened the curse and said, it's okay. It's okay, baby. And the sun hit me. Everything for a reason, man. I'm not going to question nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything is for a reason. He's a genius. I just like to say when, when negative things happen to me, like they have all my life, I like to turn out, it's an opportunity. I say it's an opportunity. But we get down and we get depressed and angry. No, nah, it's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. For you to do something great. There's an opportunity to do something great. You take the negative, like I've taken everything negative that ever happened in my life and made it positive. My older brother being crippled, if you look at uh, Bonafide, I'm doing a cripple walk on stage. He allowed me to do that. When you're living with someone who has cerebral palsy, you learn to walk just like him. My brother laughed hard. But you got negative people, oh, you shouldn't do that. Mind your business. Mm. Mind your business. But we are living in PC, a little correctness. We not so this PC. Can I can I use yeah. profanity? Because yeah. I'm getting passionate now. Yeah. This PC shit ain't got no <laughs> no place in fucking comedy. <laughs> yeah. Have a sense of humor. That PC shit taught us how to lie. Yeah. Instead of telling this motherfucker his breath stink, you want to offer him some gum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell the truth, man. Yeah. Well, this and as long as I tell the yeah. truth on stage, I ain't got to defend it. Yeah. I don't care how fresh I get, how nasty I get. It's the truth. All right? Vagina do queef when it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> when you get some good head, they do gag. <laughs> and if she don't gag, then she's disrespecting you. <laughs> it's, all, it's all, come on, man. We got to be real. Yeah. I said uh, this show is real. And that's what I love about the last OG. The greatest OG in the universe was Ben Kenobi. <laughs> my first OG was my daddy. Because yeah. I swam around in his nuts. <laughs> and that's my father. Then I got other OGs like Lauren Michaels, Martin Lawrence. People that helped me along the way. Those are OGs. Those are, oh, you know what the OG is, daddy. You know what the OG is. I had an OG when I was hustling on the streets in Harlem. His name was The Great Chiz. He was down with Bumpy Johnson. He told me. I'll never forget what he told me. You never get money with people who just want to get fucking money. You get money with people who want to get money with you. So you transcend that. Friendship transcends all of that. Because people will cut your throat for money. So I don't care about money. If you want to get money with me, I want to get me and Jordan. I said, Jordan. When I pissed it to him, I said, Jordan, you want to get some money together? He said, <laughs> I want to get money with you. Now we're about to get money. Yeah. But what's more important is this show. A lot of young people want hits. I want history. I want Nick at night. <laughs> yeah. I want a marathon, yeah. last OG marathon on, <laughs> yeah. on Thanksgiving, on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I want to come on right behind the honeymooners and the Twilight Zone. Well, this is already the I put my star yeah. down on the 10th. Yeah. In a couple of days, I'm putting my star down on the Walk of Hollywood. And that means a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing, right? But. I don't. I don't know if, if people realize how few people got series after series after series. You know what I mean? You've you've managed to be on TV for so many years and so 26. many twenty six twenty six years. Yeah, it's that's stunning. my stars for. Yeah, some people get this star for uh you know for uh you know performance and uh -huh. shows and. I got mine for TV, which is, I've been on your TV for 26 years, so I love you and thank it's you. It's amazing. In order for people to allow you in their home, they got to love you. Right. To do movies, they just got to like you. Yeah. But to be on somebody's TV in their in bedroom, yes. they got to love you. 
Right. So when JJ's father on Good Times died, I yeah. felt like somebody killed my father. That's right. That's right. When that's, Florida that's went, it. damn, damn, <laughs> I was hurt. Yeah. I was hurt. Yeah. Good Times was so good. Yeah. When it came on, it was always was some young dude in the house. With, it's on! And everybody came <laughs> yeah. on. Same thing with Archie Bunker. It's yeah. on! And then you heard, Wada Way Glen Mellow Play. <laughs> that's what I want. Yeah. I've always wanted that. But Dick Van Dyke. Right. Dick Van Dyke, the Archie, uh, the odd couple. Remember? The odd couple, uh, Jack Klugman, yeah. Tony Randolph. <laughs> These are names. Yeah. Art Klugman. Did you remember Klugman? Yeah. You are now in that kind of same era of those kind of people, whether it's Lucy. No, God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. But it's true. I mean, how many people get to these shows over I've and over? I've been blessed. It's, yeah. Somebody, I, I just did how I would say, luck, he used the word lucky with me. Yeah. I said, I don't use that word. I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. If you want luck, go to Vegas. Mm. Go to Atlantic City. Luck is for Lucifer. Yeah. Luck is short for Lucifer. It's for losers. I'm fortunate. I'm blessed. I let my son shine. Well, I've seen you on the streets the way people approach you too. People, you will just see a, a smile on their face. They come up, and Tracy's always got time for everybody. I've seen you spend time with homeless people, go into your pocket, and that's a, a very rare thing. Well, that's that, what my show is about. Yeah. If you look at the last, oh, you've seen yeah. episodes. Yeah, I've seen six episodes. And we help the homeless. Yeah. But the thing, I like I, like I said about this show, it's, it's a dark premise, but it's kind. Yes, it's very it's kind. It's kind show. Yeah. It's kind. That's what's missing in the world. We don't know how to be kind to one another. I got to know you to say I love you, brother. About 150 times a day, I tell strangers I love you. Some people are like, wait a minute. You're, you're entering my space. Some people don't. I guess you don't know how to be loved. Fuck you then. Did that make you feel better? <laughs> you feel better? Yeah. We just, we, we, we I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's technology. I don't know if it's a corporation. I don't know. Just people stressed out. I want to give some people to go home and look at without it being dark and all fucked up and some some hope. So I tell Cedric and Tiffany when we're because we film on location, we like it really in the projects in Brooklyn and all that. We on the street and I let them know when we're there, we're ambassadors. We have to be kind to these people in the neighborhood because if not, somebody could get hurt on the set. Yeah, because it's real. It's real. So we always thank the people there. We put at least one person. Employ one person in the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, and I let them know when you see these lights, when we got these lights here and these trailers and these cameras, we bring more than that. We bring hope to your youth. We bring hope to these neighborhoods. Because I come from this neighborhood. I come from Myrtle Avenue, right up the block, Tompkins Projects. And I, I grew up on the Mark Freeland and, you know, Mo Sanford. I grew up under those people. So I seen it happen. Lindell McMillan, who's Michael Jackson's lawyer, right in my building. So I seen that coming. I remember Mark Breland won the Olympic gold as a welterweight in the 84 Olympics. He came back to the projects. We was little kids running around touching the medal. Yeah. And then I made it. I said, if he could make it, then I'll get Eddie. I said, if Eddie could make it, I can make it. So if these kids see us in these neighborhoods, the last OG. I'll tell you something else. It's shot so beautifully, too, right? I mean, it. Brooklyn well, the guy gorgeous, that lit the show, yeah. the man Peaches, yeah. he's my friend, I love Peaches, <laughs> he lit the show, he lit Raging Bull. Wow. And my DP, Michael, look at the shots. Look at the camera rolling. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, man, look at the shots. We have some intimate moments, man, emotional moments. This is real. Yeah. You've seen it. Yeah, I got choked up a couple of times, especially when. Well, that's you, what we want. Yeah. Jimmy yeah. V said it best. Remember Jimmy V yeah. when he was dying of cancer and he gave that speech at the SPs? When you live, when you laugh, cry, and think all in one day, you live the full day. Yeah. You touched every emotion in one day. You live the, you should be exhausted. If you allow yourself to cry, be in touch with your emotions, and then you think, you live in the full day. So most people are just so, so programmed. Mm. They're so programmed, they can't even cry no more. You empty inside. You're so jaded. Some people, you can't allow that. You guys to be in touch with all of you. That's in the show. We're trying to touch every emotion. He says it. You know, when I left my neighborhood, was hanging on by a thread next to deal, thanks to dealers like me. Now I'm going to do it right. And it's kind. Thank God Tiffany Haddish's character, Shay, allows me to get back 
in my kid's life. But her husband, Josh, who's a white man, she married a white man. Thank God he stepped in because if I was still selling crack when she's pregnant, I was still out here, I might have took her and my, my kids down the wrong road. So God snatched me out, threw me away for 15 years, put me where I needed to be because I might have touched some people in prison. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he stepped in and look at my kids. They're good kids. Everything for a reason. Like my grandmother said, everything for a reason. Everything. Everything for a reason. Yo, when you, your hope and all that, just get on your knees. Go in the bathroom. Take a deep breath. Get on your knees. And please give me the strength. That's the only way that strength came from to forgive that driver. Came from God. I remember when I did it. I was crying. It was one night in the summer after the accident. I was in my hospital bed and it was raining. About three in the morning. And I looked out the window. I was crying. I mean, just, I said, God, please give me the strength to forgive this man. I know it was an accident. And boom. I was free. I was gone. I was free. That's what Jimmy Mack would have wanted. And this this show is dedicated to Jimmy, the last yeah. OG. He was my last OG. Sixty two year old man wasn't ready to go. The last OG, but you know, I, when I when I, I'm gonna see him again. Mm -hmm. My my reward is not I me. Mean, Walmart gave me tons of money, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not my yeah. reward. Yeah, that's not my reward. My reward is when he welcomed me back into his kingdom, and I see my pops. I'm gonna see all. I'm gonna see all y'all people. They all waiting on us. Only way you get rewarded is how you treat your brothers and your sisters here. Now, you will be rewarded. So I must ask myself. Everything I'm my, today. I told you where my friends are today. Yeah. Everybody. And if you hadn't lost Jimmy Mac that day, he'd probably be involved in this show. No. You, you, no. No. It wouldn't have happened. No. Yeah. You don't know what would happen. He's a genius. This is plan. If if was a fifth, we all be drunk. <laughs> I don't use the word if or but or I don't right. use no excuses. It's an acceptance. It's done is done. Right. When you can't accept it, it's a problem. Ain't no if. If Jimmy Mack wasn't gone, none of this would I mean none of this happened. Everything for a reason. Everything. Everything. I'm not thinking back. I don't look backwards. I'm a forward thinking man. But it's all it's good. It's, it's all good. It's done. It's done. But you dedicate the show to him and your family. Yeah, he's OG. Yeah. When I was being a knucklehead, Jimmy was the one that grabbed me. Yo, let me talk to you, young blood. That's not how you carry it. That's not how you treat her. She's delicate. She's a rose. You're gonna bend the stem and the petals gonna fall off. You can't do that. I could use profanity here, right? Yeah. When it comes to women, yeah. I don't give a fuck how big your dick is or your wallet. If you're not nice to her, she's going to leave. You got to be kind to them. But we don't. You know us. We, we don't miss the water till the well went dry. Mm -hmm. We take it for granted because she's there. Just because she's there. We think we're supposed to get it. We think we're supposed to. She's supposed to cook. Oh, I want you be nice to her, homie. I'm learning. I'm still learning. I know I'm just learning the language of love. Just learning that, man. I'm, I'm I'm a different person. I spread love, man. It's bigger than funny now. Now it's bigger than funny. Way bigger. Funny, funny, funny. But it's way bigger than that. I know. We need it. We need it. We need a show like this. I want the conversation in the beauty salon. I don't know if she's going to stay with Josh. She, I think she's going to go back. To, that's where it's at. In the barbershop. Yeah. That's where it's at. I want people talking about it. She, I think she's going to leave. She's probably going to stay with Tracy. I we want that. In the first episode, you see she's angry. She's angry because I left her. Left her for 15 years out here with them kids, man. Left her. So she's angry. Even on the set, it was emotional. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yo, <laughs> Tiffany, would you, she's in character. Yeah. She's in character. So I was like, Tiffany, calm down. But the, but, the, but, the, but the women on the set. We like no, she's angry because I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> this is just TV. <laughs> go, okay, yeah, but that's good. That makes for good TV. Stay in the moment. When we working, we working, and it comes right off the screen to you. You should be emotional about your music and your TVs and your movies. You should be emotional. You should be attached. Who isn't attached to the Godfather? Rich man, poor man. <laughs> Who ain't attached? I was attached. 
When I saw the plan of the apes with my Uncle Charlton ass. <laughs> Take your stinking paws <laughs> off me, damn dirty ape. It could have been a black dude doing that part, right? Yeah. Because we love profanity. Yeah. Man. Take your stinking paws <laughs> off me, you bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> God, God, God damn it. Tyrone, please say what's on the paper. <laughs> God damn it. And that these passion and project for you, you'll drop lines in throughout this series, too. There's yeah, we do Planet it. of the li yeah. Apes in Limes. We're in the yeah. moment. We're yeah. in the moment. Yeah. In the moment. We are in the moment. We stick, stick. We stay close to the script because Jordan Peele and those writers. We got a great writing staff, and they're awesome. They're awesome people who are writing this show. But when you feel something, go ahead. If there's something, listen. If yeah. the spirit move you, then it move you. Yeah. And you know when the spirit move me, it move me. You know you've done yeah. interviews with me. When the spirit yeah. move me, it move me. It move me. When the spirit move you, sometimes people say, "Well, why you do that for him? You know you're a piece of shit." Why you buy it? Why you do that? Because the spirit moved me, man. Because the spirit moved me. That means you're in a spirit world. And you did some kind for a piece of shit person. That's because the spirit moved you. Don't beat yourself up about it. And if you must beat yourself up, don't use a bat. Use a feather. <laughs> you hurt yourself with that fucking bat. It's not that bad. You did something nice. But we, are, we all got egos. And you know what egos stand for, yeah. right? Edging God out. Get rid of that fucking ego. Make it slight. Make your ego slight. But you know, we got this movement now, and now it's women against men and all that crazy shit. Now nah, we united, we stand. Divided, we fall. But that's the world dividing us. Women, women, power, women, no. Unite, what about us? See, most people look at it like this. Man, woman, child. That's wrong. My dad told me, man, woman, child. You on top of your woman and your kids. It's supposed to be man, woman, child. We all equal, but everybody got their place. We all equal, but everybody got their place. And I'm still in front. Because I'm knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. How do you know you wise if I don't tell you? We don't say you wise, you know. We don't talk like that. We say, how do you know you're wise? You know why you know you're beautiful? Because I told you. But if another woman tell you, she could be jelly. She could be jealous. You don't know where the fucking bitch come from. But a man told you, girl, you look good. You look motherfucking good. Because a grown-ass man told you that. We ain't getting older. We ain't getting older, boy. You are not getting older. Your kids is getting older. You getting awesome. If you knew then what you know now, you rule the fucking world. You just wasn't ready for it. You didn't have enough room up there yet. This is oddly uncomfortable. Uh... <laughs> you know what I mean? Just let you ladies know. Don't fold your arms. Don't fold your arms. Don't never fold your arms. Don't fold your arms. You marry? You marry? No. So if the one that's love you, he ain't gonna approach you if you don't approach me. That's what that signifies. Don't come in my space. But what if he wanna say hi to you? I tell people all the time, unfold your arms, man. You signifying. Don't approach me. Don't enter my space. But that's where we are in society now. We don't hug each other. We don't, we don't, yo, I love you, man. I love you, man. Like, you know what? Angelo Dundee was Muhammad Ali's manager many years ago. You know what he told Muhammad Ali? What's that? It don't cost nothing to be nice. We can't even do that. Everybody want to use technology as a platform to voice shit. <laughs> Everybody want to be heard. When it comes to women, 70% of their concern disappears when she's talking to you and she knows you hear her. When she's talking to you and she knows you hear her. Now the trick to doing that is at the height of the argument. That's when you grab her and say, baby, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Shh, shh. Listen, you're saying this to me. I'm interpreting it as this and processing it as this and I'm saying this to you. That is a conversation. Now, I don't agree with you, but I hear you. Watch it not be concerned no more. Mm. All of that's in the show. Yeah. It's stuff that we need. That's what this show is based on. Stuff that we need every day to get along. You know what separates the people, cuz? Not skin color. Pride. Foolish pride. Oh, you think you're better than me because you're white? Or oh, I think I'm better than you because I'm black? No. Pride. You need to swallow your damn pride. I know it tastes like shit. Swallow it. Then shit it out. Because <laughs> it's all pride. Yeah. Bullshit pride. Don't get nobody nowhere. 
Well, in the in the last OG, I also see you making sure the comedy is all over the show. Cedric, it's organic. Oh. Yeah, Cedric is unbelievable in this. You know what Cedric is like? Cedric is like, he's got that speed of a, like Bill Cosby and Saturday Night Live, yeah. Saturday, Uptown Saturday Night. Yeah. He can tell stories and it's like that. And I love it. Oh, he has so many. And then you got Edie. She's a surprise. Yeah. She's in Grendel's, the coffee shop. Yeah, she's amazing. She, I made a cry on set. I looked at her one day and yeah. I told her, you my Carol Burnett. That's sweet. She was getting applause breaks during each take, in between each takes. I was like, this girl is quick. Everyone remembers her from Vice Principals, too, and she was so great in that, but she plays a completely different character in this. You got young Derek Gaines, who's a hot young Coming comedian in town. Yeah. yeah. And I, I uh, well, I remember when he got your show, he was so excited. And I told him how you told me how much Martin meant to you when you brought him in. I talked to, yeah, talk yeah. to him when we were in Mullins, when we were in the halfway house. Yeah. Talk to him all the time. I know they look up to me. I try to provide them with, uh, like I told Tiffany, I want to give you someplace safe and warm and loving and free to work. You ain't got to worry about me masturbating no flower plants. In <laughs> you gotta worry, that's not thank God. Thing. Oh, I thank can. God. <laughs> me and my wife role played the other day and did that. You know? Yeah. Masturbating in the flower yeah. plant. Could you move that plant over here a little closer? Yeah. <laughs> Give you some place safe to work. But I do think that's one of the reasons for your success is that you're always on good teams. All these shows that you've had success with, it's not just you. You you seem like I don't like Robin Williams and Mark and Mindy had to carry so much of that weight and it kind of burned well, out. God fast. is working with me on that yeah. one. God is working with me on that one. Help. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with getting some help. When you're on a basketball court, when you're in trouble, y'all help. Right. I don't want to hear that my bad shit. Y'all help. Communicate on the court, and that's what we do on the set. Everyone says good morning, and everyone respects everybody's process and space. Please, let's make this a beautiful. Well, so we had a premiere party in Brooklyn the other day. Yeah. And Buster Rhymes performed. It was awesome. And I told my whole team, I got everybody in the back row. Tiffany said, I said, have a good time tonight. Have fun. We ain't celebrating until we in our sixth, seventh season. We're going to take this as one show at a time, just like we did on 30 Rock. One show at a time. And when it was over, we was all so sad because we family. We spending more time together than we do with our real families. To shoot one day is like 14 hours. You on set at six o'clock. You in makeup at six o'clock. You on the set at eight, and you don't leave until ten, eleven. Sometimes three in the morning. And you working though, but it's, it's it's so much fun being with these new people. Mm -hmm. You know, Tiffany and and sometimes I gotta yell because we're not in the moment. We goof around too much. Let's get back in the moment. And they professionally do it, and we film. We can't keep letting the director wait. Right. And when you're in that halfway house, which is, all you know, comedy. all, all comics comedy. and all, all this old school kind of stuff. And then you move it over into a sweeter place after that. I mean, oh, I, I make sure yeah. that on a, on a show that I told my writers, tread carefully when you're dealing with the two kids, Tiffany Haddish and her husband. Yeah. Tread carefully. If you want comedy, go to Grundles. If you want comedy, go to Mullins. Right. You tread carefully with them. Because if we not, if we don't carry this family right, America will turn on you. Yes. And you could get the laugh, but end up destroying the tone. You don't want of the that. Show. Yeah. Tread carefully. Yeah. Don't goof it up and tread carefully with the kids. We had one scene that we, we I rewrote it, where when I, you seen it when yeah. I took them on the true safari it's, it's, to where they was coming yeah. and I took them back to the cemetery. That's, that, that's the, that's the scenes that choked me up when you, when they were, when you guys were explaining to her kids wow, what she was like wow. when she was younger and you were in that same place, it was really, really beautiful. Dude. I'm glad to touch you, man. Yeah. Cause it's, it based, I, when I said my grandmother, she's up there, her name yeah. is Nan. That's my great grandmother. That's your real great grandmother. That was yeah. the first Morgan, Nan Morgan. She's where it started. All of us as my grandfather's mother. Non, sweetest person in the world. She used to show me and my older brother pictures of her and her mom's picking cotton. Yeah. When we were kids, so I put it in a show. But I think that, yeah, I think that's that but kind of truth that works. I had to, like I was getting back yeah. 
to check carefully with them. One scene they had when we was in, and I was like, you see over there in the tree, that's where me and your mother made you? Yeah. Well, the original was, that's where I fucked your mother and made y'all. Yeah. And I hit the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, right. I hit the ceiling. Yeah. I hit the ceiling. Why would I say that to my 15-year-old daughter? Yeah. Y'all right, this come over here now. Y'all better fix it. I mean it. I mean it. Somebody gonna lose their job if you don't fucking fix this shit now. Why would I say that to my 15-year-old daughter? Yeah. And I just came home from prison. Did that make sense to you? Oh, it was funny to you when you wrote it at four in the morning. You think that's funny? No, this is what we're going to say. Over there is where the magic happened. That's where your mother pulled a rabbit out of the hat. Look at the kids, voila. Right. Now, that ain't that better? Yeah. It's me telling yeah, them what happened. Yeah, really sweet. Well, I actually telling them what happened. But those kids were so great because you were they're saying- They're awesome. Yeah. Dante and Taylor, yeah. I love them. Like on set, they're my kids. Yeah. Like I'm very overprotective with Tiffany, Josh, and the two kids. I'm very overprotective with them and their parents. I won't allow the writing to hurt my kids. Mm -hmm. She don't need to be in this room while that guy is taking pictures of us naked. No. Because mm. they're kids. They're somebody's kids. And I right. owe it to their fathers and their mothers to protect them on my set. We got something good. Let's not hurt it. And the writers understand. And they, they just redo it. And, oh, thank God. Well, see, that's the thing that I love, too, when you're explaining to those kids who their mom was. It goes to show how much she changed for the kids. That's the difference. She's a fighter. Yeah. She's a fighter. Yeah. And I know what part really you love. Yeah. It was in maybe the third episode when she throws the brick through the cop car. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that was the ice being broken. Yeah. She was angry with me up until that point. She remembered us. She know why I went to prison. I was hustling for us. I'm not no dirt bag out here. I was getting money for us. That's when she remembered. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. It was great. When she turned around and said, fuck the police. Yeah. 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 That's great. when everybody, yeah. you should have seen the women. That was, <laughs> it was people crying. It was, yeah. It, people laughing and people thinking like, where's this? Okay. And that's what I'm, I'm proud of most. I'm proud of that most. No other artist was able to reach an emotional depth like Michael Jackson and Joe Cocker. You mm. are so beautiful. Think about that. He's crying. Nobody's reaching that level of emotional depth. Look at she's out of my life. Make grown men just came home from prison cry. To reach that emotion. I want that emotion in the show. I want people to look at it and break down and yeah. And think about them, their loved ones. And maybe that might make somebody in this room pick up the phone and call somebody you ain't spoke to in a long time. I love you. You ain't got to hang out with them. It ain't got to be all of that. Just let them know I love you and I miss you. Because life is too short before a lot of us is too long. I hope somebody in this a fucking car hit me today because this shit is too hard. Until you get hit and you're in a coma and you lose a friend. Let me tell you, we got to all embrace this shit. Embrace, because one day everybody in this room ain't going to be here. And everything go down in the big book. All them times you masturbate in the bathroom, God see. <laughs> all the times you beat on God see that. <laughs> this name is Derek. Okay, this is God. Oh, Derek, 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 Derek. <laughs> beat off in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting into heaven is hard, man. It's like getting into a, a high a high class club. There's a guy at the, at the at the front door. And you can't just get into heaven. This guy with the with the pad. Uh, crazy, crazy. Uh, nope, nope, don't see your name up here. You gotta get to the back. I know you're Gundy. Get in the back. Hitler, raise your hand. That's what I feel about Lord yeah. Michael. He's one of my OGs. Yeah. But they said every Jewish man. He's supposed to love one nigga in his life. I'm glad he chose me. <laughs> glad he chose me. <laughs> I'm glad he chose me. Every Jewish motherfucker's supposed to love one nigga in his life. Glad he chose me. You check back in with him from time to time? Oh, yeah, honest, yeah. I, if you watch the last Saturday Night Live, yeah. when I came 14 months after the accident. That's unbelievable. If you see when I sing good nights, I said, Lauren Michaels, I love you like I love my daddy. I transcend color. If I love you, you remember do the right thing? If I love you, I love you. But if I hate you, it's another story. If I love you, I love you. 
I love Lauren Michaels, man. He's given me and my family an opportunity. A, a chance. A, not a chance, but a choice. So thank God. Yeah, yeah, man, I love him. Like I said that to the world. I love you like I love my daddy. Because I know my father's up in heaven working through you to get to me. Guidance. In show business. Yeah. My wife is 18 years younger than me, and I got to guard her. Got to guard her and my daughter. Got to be here. You see these grades in my eyebrow? They wasn't there before the accident. Yeah. When I was in that coma, boy, I fought. I fought. My daughter was only 10 months old. I had to fight. Come back. I had to fight. You just, I had to fight. So I'm talking to Dr. Julius Irving at the All-Star Game. And I was telling him my testimony because I have a testimony. I testify. We all got to tes testify. Tell your testimony. So I'm telling him, you know, about the visions I had. I don't know if I was in the coma out. I was highly sedated because my femur was in little pieces. So I told him, you know, I see my dad. And I told him about Richard Pryor was in, in and Lucia Ball and all these people. And he said, yeah, my mom comes to me in my dreams too sometimes. He said, interact with them, but never follow them. If you see your loved ones in a dream, interact with them. Just don't follow them. Especially when you ain't ready to go. Fight. People here still love you. They need you. And you felt like when you were in that coma, you had a choice whether you could go or stay. That was part of what was happening. I don't know if I had a choice. I don't yeah. know. I just know I didn't go. I saw it in my dad's eyes. I'm not ready for you. I ain't seen my dad in 31 years, man. Last time I saw my father was in the coffin, man. I just went to his grave site last summer. After 30 years in the ground, I've never been back. Got into my phone. My wife took a picture of me kissing my father's tombstone on the ground. I haven't been back. I'm going back this summer, though. My daughter put flowers down. I was a crazy self. <laughs> I, I know uh, things happen to people, but I don't think that they always hold on to them the way you have. It seems like you keep all these things that happen to you, good and bad, right with you all the time, every day. They don't leave. Yeah. Beat <laughs> <laughs> off in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting into heaven is hard, man. It's like getting into a, a high a high class club. It's a guy at the, at the at the front door. And you can't just get into heaven. This guy with the with the pad. Oh, man. Crazy, crazy, man. Nope, nope, don't see your name up here. You gotta get to the back. I know you're Gundy. Get in the back. Hitler, raise your hand. That's what I feel about Lord yeah. Michael. He's one of my OGs. Yeah. But they said every Jewish man. Is supposed to love one nigga in his life. I'm glad he chose me. <laughs> glad he chose me. <laughs> I'm glad he chose me. Every Jewish motherfucker supposed to love one nigga in his life. I'm glad he chose me. Do you check back in with him from time to time? Oh, yeah, honest, yeah. I, if you watch the last Saturday Night Live, yeah. when I came 14 months after the accident, that's unbelievable. If you see when I sing good nights, I said, Lauren Michaels, I love you like I love my daddy. I transcend color. If I love you, you remember do the right thing? If I love you, I love you. But if I hate you, it's another story. If I love you, I love you. I love Lauren Michaels, man. He's given me and my family an opportunity. A, a chance. A, a, not a chance, but a choice. So thank God. Yeah, yeah, man, I love him like I said that to the world. I love you like I love my daddy. Because I know my father's up in heaven working through you to get to me. Guidance. In show business. Yeah. My wife is 18 years younger than me, and I got to guard her. Got to guard her and my daughter. Got to be here. You see these grades in my eyebrow? They wasn't there before the accident. Yeah. When I was in that coma, boy, I fought. I fought. My daughter was only 10 months old. I had to fight. Come back. I had to fight. You just, I had to fight. So I'm talking to Dr. Julius Irving at the All-Star Game. And I was telling him my testimony because I have a testimony. I testify. We all got to testi testify. Tell your testimony. So I'm telling him, you know, about the visions I had. I don't know if I was in the coma out. I was highly sedated because my femur was in little pieces. So I told him, you know, I see my dad. And I told him about Richard Pryor was in, in and Lucia Ball and all these people. And he said, yeah, my mom comes to me in my dreams too sometimes. He said, interact with them, but never follow them. 
If you see your loved ones in a dream, interact with them. Just don't follow them. Especially when you ain't ready to go. Fight. People here still love you. They need you. And you felt like when you were in that coma, you had a choice whether you could go or stay. That was part of what was happening. I don't know if I had a choice. I don't yeah. know. I just know I didn't go. I saw it in my dad's eyes. I'm not ready for you. I ain't seen my dad in 31 years, man. Last time I saw my father was in the coffin, man. I just went to his grave site last summer. After 30 years in the ground, I've never been back. Got into my phone. My wife took a picture of me kissing my father's tombstone on the ground. I haven't been back. I'm going back this summer, though. My daughter put flowers down. I was a crazy <laughs> self. <laughs> I, I know... Uh, uh, Things happen to people, but I don't think that they always hold on to them the way you have. It seems like you keep all these things that happen to you, good and bad, right with you all the time, every day. They don't leave. Yeah. We don't leave. We got memories. We don't leave. They don't leave. You just can't let them bring you down. Everything for a reason. You can't let it bring you down. You can't. Ups and downs, man. God ain't there when you want them to be there. You're always right on time. So what? You ever get that check in the mail? You go, this shit is right on time. <laughs> you ever that ever happen to you? Everything yeah. is in a place that's planned. We just want things because of the times we're living in where everything is instant. Instagram, <laughs> microwaves. We want everything now. When you know you ain't ready for it. <laughs> when you know you ain't ready for that. Everybody want a million dollars. When they know they ain't ready, you ain't even got a plan for it. You're going to get it and spend, spend, spend. You're going to fulfill every dream you ever wanted. Spend, spend, spend. You ain't even thinking about making no more money. You're going to spend. When it's all gone, you're going to want to kill yourself because you had no plans for it. You had no plans. All you wanted to do was spend. I'm about making money. I'm about to get in that paper. You can't knock the hustle, man. I'm from Brooklyn, man. I'm from New York City. Let me tell y'all something, man. John Lennon. New York is Rome. We living in Rome right now. Think about the Roman days. This is Rome. Yeah. John Lennon said it. New York is Rome. Ben Laden ain't want nothing in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> One of them two buildings right down the block. They were exactly what they were called the World Trade Center. But then we got to look at what we lost. Let's look at what we lost. Because when we remember when we got Bin Laden that night, mm -hmm. I looked at the news, everybody's partying in front of the White House, and I said, this is sick. This is sick. We just totally forgot about the 3,000 we lost. They just went to work that day like them kids in that school. They just went to work. Jimmy Mack did not know it was going to be his last day. And the funny thing about it, I was touring. My daughter was 10 months old. Her, her mom went to every show on that tour except for that one. Because the baby was teething, so she had a fever. So I said, Booby, stay home. I'll be right back. I called Jimmy Mack. I said, yo, you roll over me. Look what happened. That was my tour. I lived with that. And for two years, a year and a half, I beat myself up. I almost lost my family. <laughs> almost, I mean, beat myself. I almost, I almost lost them. I know my wife wouldn't survive and that baby wouldn't survive. You said you see the truck? You go on YouTube and see that shit? I know I would I would have lost some. So one day I went to see my psychiatrist. He said, Tracy, you got tired. Tracy, you made the best decision in your life, man. They here. They here. Stop beating yourself up. And if you do, use a bat. Use a feather, not a bat. They here. So then when, I, when he told me that and I seen it like that, I moved on. Now I'm doing comedy and they, they doing well. The baby's four. My wife is trying to, I'm trying to get her pregnant again. <laughs> so I'm not done. I want a son with her. It's all to the good. My oldest son's, a, yo man, I'm here. I'm back on your TV. And I, you know what? We all go through hell, right? Yeah. Just don't come back empty handed. I came back with the last OG pop. Yeah. You know how I feel? The last so G, I think y'all gonna like it. I really think y'all gonna like it. Because it's a good series.
Tracy, let me just say too, it's a it's a beautiful thing that you're doing for Brooklyn as well, and you you oh, show man, the you changes of both sides. For Brooklyn, not yeah. just Brooklyn. Yeah. There's a company they're making br br uh, brownies. I wish y'all yeah. have brought some brownies yeah. with my face on his last OG brownies <laughs> made by people who are trying to get their life back on track. This company's been around since 1984. I wish I knew the name of it. The company and they, they make brownies and cookies where people would just come home from prison. Single parent mom, people was having a hard time getting, and they they doing it with the last OG, and also they put a new basketball court in Marcy Projects, and I'm cutting the ribbon this week. That's great, man. I played in that basketball court. Yeah. So TBS and the marketing team, I love you, TBS, so much. You don't even know Brett, Kevin Riley, I love you, David, Levine, I love you guys, Smook, Steve Smook, I love you, Mark Landsman. Ben Morelli, who's my lawyer, that single-handedly beat Walmart. But when I met him, he came to my house for the first time. I looked at him and said, I don't want no money. I want justice for Jimmy Mack. Not only did they take care of us, they took public acknowledgement and responsibility for the accident. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's what my life is like, man. That's what our life is. But... Hey, man, people say, um, you get a lot of love, Tracy. Yeah, it's nice, but it's more important for me to give it back. Yeah. That's you... what means something to me, to tell you I love you, man. He say he spared my life to see, I can see that. I want to give people hope. I want to be inspiring. Yo, man, my, my recovery was inspiration to a lot of people who are in wheelchairs or all of that, man. Fight, 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 fight. We got to start loving each other, man. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it, man. You don't know, man. That's dead near to my heart, man. People. It's people. It's people. It's cool, man. It is. And I'll say this, too. And it's one thing to say those things, but the fact that you bring that to the OG, the fact that there's, there's kindness towards people who used I'm to sling or, and, and whatever they had to do. Yeah. I'm doing what I got to do from where I'm at. I'm not needed on no picket lines and all. I'm needed right there on TV giving hope and love. I can reach a lot more people with this show. I can reach millions with this show. I'm fine with it. When you look at it, yo, me and Tiffany had his husband in the show. We ain't got no beef. Yeah. We are family. I go back and get him. You seen that yes. episode. I go back and get him. Yeah. That's because I love her. Right. And those are my kids. And then you have love and respect for the person that she formed you know a life with. I said to him, really, yeah. second chances are a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing, and you don't expect well, this Well, they the captured comedy. it in Jordan Peele. Yeah. Thank you. He captured the vulnerability. And we need some place to go where we can be vulnerable. We need some place to go. You can't be tough and hard all the time. You need some place. Imagine that. You want to know what happiness is? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you what happiness is? Mm -hmm. People got all kinds of excuses, but you all wrong. Happiness is a simple thing, man. Happiness is simply having something to look forward to. You think people on death row got happiness? We all got tomorrow to look forward to. And you can take that from little orphan Annie. The sun come out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So you got to hang on till tomorrow. Uh, hang on to it. The last OG, it's Tuesdays, 1030 on tomorrow. TBS. You're... There's no other show like it because there's no other Tracy Morgan. Tracy, thank you so much, my friend. God bless you, pal.